Have you ever been wondering if your server was just slow or it was your network? Us too. Today we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at the Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro SE. Now there is kind of a funny story about this. I, I've been toying around and kind of playing with these a bit where I actually had one at home and I have absolutely loved them. And, but it was like a normal dream machine, the little canister ones, they're super cool. And uh, it died. When I RMA'd it, they said, we are so sorry, we don't have any more of the canister ones left. But they offered, hey, would you be interested in a Dream Machine Pro SE? I'm like, heck yes, I would. I would love an updated rack mount version of the Dream Machine. And this packaging is phenomenal. I can't say that enough. It is really good. If you're looking for a commercial grade rack mount unit, these things are phenomenal. These do boast a lot of power over Ethernet. Now, we are not using a whole lot of power over Ethernet, but it does allow a lot of options moving forward. This is one gigabit for the most part, but it does have 10 gigabit Ethernet down the line for us if we expand that direction. On the flip side, it is painfully simple. They have these little covers that you just pull off to find your power. And then if you do have an uninterruptible power supply, you can connect it into this section. It is a simple, actually pretty lightweight switch slash firewall slash UDM slash everything you need for your local network. So the real question is what's in the other box, right? Cause we all kind of like, oh, okay, well there's a the box, but then like, what does the rest of it look like? Hey, you get this really cool handy dandy quick start guide a braided power cord. This is one of the nicest power cords I have ever seen. I absolutely love it. And then mounting hardware in a box that you're not going to lose everything in. So I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to move it on over here. Dude, I love this power cord. This thing is so, so nice. It even has this back plug on it. Like you don't see that very often for even these types of devices. Okay, then we'll plug it in. We'll see how loud this guy is. That's a little LED thing, it's starting. So we have let it run and boot and it's working on its first boot and we have heard nothing, absolutely nothing, which I absolutely love. Check this out. Have you ever seen these laid out so well? This is a really nice layout and it's like a foam core. It is just delightful. Now on these Ubiquiti machines, we are hoping to see once again, a network increase if we look at our previous video we were seeing slow network speed so once we get this up fine-tuned and operational we'll be hoping to get speeds that exceed at least what we're getting because if we are getting the exact same speeds as before then we know that there may be something wrong with our video server Whew, it is a little toasty here today and if you're uh, questioning and complaining at our cable management that's okay I complain about it too. I'm just gonna get it plugged in so that we can do a little bit of updates. And so I wanna get that part moving first and foremost. Okay, now I know a lot of people are like manuals. I, they are silly, but these ones are actually pretty worth it. Especially if you're new to these types of networking. Networking is not my favorite. It is also not my forte, but it's easy to catch up when you have instructions as simple as these. Where it's take a look, scan a code and you're ready to go and just like that it's scanned it up and now it's going to provide us the step-by-step -step instruction manual for how to mount everything now granted i follow all these rules no can you put an extra hard drive in for extra logs yes you can do i need logs no not really but they do want us to have the unify app and then connect to the device via bluetooth Okay, so as I got closer, the Unify app popped up and showed that the new console has been found. So then it says, oh, my distance is far. It is like three feet from me. So that's, that could be a little bit better, but we'll go ahead and click setup. And we're going to hit next. I don't want them analyzing my data. They're seeing our internet speed could be better, but that's okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I'm going to uh, turn my phone away. You don't need to see this part. So now it's saying that it's going to set it up and it's going to take about six minutes. Without us even doing anything yet, as you can see, it is now showing the new device on the network. We have internet, it's been mostly configured, but I've tried to ensure that any QoS, everything else is turned off. And we are going to see the evidence of the test, right? So we have a really big file right here, and then we're going to pick it up and just move it on over. I'm gonna hit okay. So, and I, I will specify on this test, I'm remoted into one of our file servers so that as I do a copy and paste, it's directly from one server to another. I'm not using another computer as an intermediary. And as we look, it saturates it really, really nicely. And this is going from one server to our video server. And then it is going to tank again. But this is still a little bit better than it was previously. So that's kind of cool. We were sitting down at 20. I think this is hovering at 2830. Now during this troubleshooting, we did find one thing that was really curious. We do have dual networks on this device. And for whatever reason, even though both of these are said to be gigabits, one of the connections, and for whatever reason, the probably most primary connection is at 100 megs instead of a true gigabit connection. We have tried to turn that off and run these tests again, and we have been met with the exact same results. So it has not fixed that problem. We learned that for the most part, it isn't our network, though we are seeing network improvements and enhancements throughout the day. The network is snappier. We are finding that it's getting, devices are being found faster, that we're logging into things faster. What we are still having a problem with is the video server itself. The hard drives can go faster, the uh, SATA can go faster, the PCI Express can go faster, and the network can go faster. So at this point, we're unsure. We are gonna begin testing with a couple other server softwares just to see if there is some other bottleneck that is related to this one device. And if you have suggestions or thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and put them down below. We would love to have your comments. And have a wonderful day. Today is Wednesday. Wednesdays are good. They're not as good as Mondays. It's a Wednesday. I appreciate the Wednesdays.